Lab Notes, 24th March, 2023. Today I'm starting some Camellia sinensis seeds, Penax quincofolium seeds in bare roots, and some Hydrastis canadensis bare roots. These were received yesterday and I have to get them started now. Starting with the Camellia sinensis tea seeds, I'm curious about the absorption of water during imbibition, so I'm going to weigh my seeds before and after a 24 hour soak. Sinensis seeds should arrive damp, so they needed to be dried off before the initial weighing in so as to not to throw off the results. Because the seeds are so large, I can number and weigh them individually. That should also give me more data about each seed's viability and its relationship with imbibition. I'm using a silver permanent marker here. The seed coat should prevent the solvent from causing any damage, but I'm just guessing. One of the seeds of the Sochi variety has already cracked open. It was labeled number one of that group. That also allows me to see any differences in weight gain in that cracked seed specifically. This is also a wonderful opportunity to use my new analytical balance. It's a Denver Instruments A200D with a 0.1 milligram resolution. I bought it on eBay for cheap because it has a broken window. Also, if you touch any of the bare metal, you get a mild electric shock, but that's probably because my house doesn't have grounded outlets. Each seed weight was recorded after the balance had settled down, which took a while. The seeds were dropped into these 5.5 ounce cups. Distilled water was added to the top. Look at that, no floaters. Cups were labeled with the species, variety, source, and date as usual, three groups in total. Initial research suggests that 20 to 25 degrees Celsius is probably best for these varieties. My incubator is set to 30 degrees C right now, so these cups will sit on my desk at room temp for the next 24 hours. Moving on to the Panax quincofolium, American ginseng. When the seeds arrived, they had already begun to sprout. They were advertised as pre-stratified, which cuts down on the time required for establishment immensely. These can apparently be sown directly outdoors. However, it's still freezing at night around here, these seeds have been continually exposed to warm temperatures for up to a week at this point, so I'm not going to risk it by putting them outside unprotected. Also, the squirrels are getting rowdy and would love a ginseng seed snack. So instead, I'm going to use regular 1020 trays with 72 cell inserts filled with pasteurized peat perlite potting mix. This is batch ID PPPM7. Here I am just filling cells. This would go so much faster with a large bin to contain the mess. Anyway, the seeds are placed one by one into about one centimeter deep holes, preferably with the root extending downward. At this point, I would like to explain why this video is marked lab notes. It is just an annotated video log of what I did this time. It does not represent the best protocol for these plants. For a while, I considered not doing something like this, hands only filmed on a phone kind of grow lug, or even creating a second channel exclusively for that kind of content. I personally don't like that style, as it tends to be sparsely informative, and that also seems to be contrary to the almighty algorithm. However, I really want to start sharing more of my work, and this is the only way to do it effectively at this time. Watch if you want, or not, whatever. So many seeds. In total, 111 from vendor EBS and 58 from vendor CP. After planting, the seeds are covered, then irrigated with tap water. And a label is inserted with the species, source, date, and media. Then it is covered with the standard humidity dome. Here's another group of seeds from a different vendor, setting up for some good photos. Fewer of these seeds had already germinated compared to the last group, so they were just dropped into the hole with no respect for orientation. Again, labels were added, this time to each cell, since the tray was split between groups. I ran out of labels, so I cut some more from the stack of window blinds with a pair of tin snips. So cheap. Graphite pencil works great on these plastic blinds. Labels again. Need another tray. More labels. I'm being especially cautious this year with labeling. Last year, those rowdy squirrels I was talking about tipped over a couple of trays, spewed the cells everywhere. I didn't know what seed went where, and I ended up watering several weeds for six months. I also had to check in on some Legochilis inebrians seeds that I have been experimenting with for a couple of months. 
These are an exceptionally rare acquisition, so I've been going slow with germination testing. Here I am transferring one of the groups to a new dish, away from the mold that has popped up, and redoing the label. Moving on to the quincofolium bare roots. Since they are already quite big, I decided to use double size inserts, 36 cells per 1020 tray. Bonus points for being able to replace one of the 6 cell inserts directly with a 3 cell insert. The plantlets were delicately placed root down and covered with soil, while allowing the small shoot to remain uncovered, then irrigated with tap water and labeled. Lovely. Next was the Hydrastis canadensis, golden seal, bare root. I ordered four, but one mass actually had three easily separable portions, so I ended up with six. Again, I'm using the larger cell inserts. The roots were inserted not so delicately in the cells and filled with potting mix. The small gold shoots were kept just above the surface. Irrigated with tap water and labeled. Awesome. And that's it for today's lab notes. Bye.